It is a beautiful Sunday. And yet again, allow me welcome you to Dominion Church International Mbuya. My name is K. Ben, and this being a Sunday, of course, there is no better place to be than in the presence of the Lord. And you know, as the norm of the day has become, we bring you church right to your home because of, you know, the prevailing conditions. But nevertheless, we thank the dear good Lord that we can come to you, rejoice with you, celebrate with you, and share the word with you. Now, every week, throughout the week, we are live on our various social media platforms, on Facebook and on YouTube, that is at Dominion Church International. Before I go forward with this service, please, allow me ask you to kindly share that link that you're seeing below your screen with every single one of your friends in every group that they are in. Tell them church is on live at Dominion Church International. Share the good news with them. And believe me, I promise they will be blessed because you invited them in for service. Now, every Tuesday at Dominion Church International, we have the beautiful Bible study with our resident pastor, John Mbazira. Apparently, it's the book of Revelation, amazing insights. Very, very amazing insights are being shared. And I believe that you don't want to miss out on that. Okay? Please tag in every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. It is the Bible study. Now, come Friday. Tell your neighbor Friday. Beautiful. It is the Holy Ghost Lunch Hour Revival Service with our pastor, our senior pastor, Reverend Robert Kaziwe. Now, with that service, it's quite amazing. It's a little different. Because why you can get to be a part of the audience by sharing in your requests, your prayer requests, and whatever it is you want the pastor to pray with you for or believe with you for. From 1 to 2 p.m., it is the Holy Ghost Lunch Hour Revival Service, still at Dominion Church International. Now, every Sunday, we come with you with a fully packaged product, and that defines us as Dominion Church International. That is witnessing the word and worship. It is a beautiful Sunday service where we come and celebrate Christ with you like never before. And today, it's no different. Okay, so invite your friend, tell them church is here. And I believe that for the next 45 minutes, you're going to be blessed because you tuned in and because you watched in. Love you so much and allow me to welcome our dear, beautiful worship team. Put your hands together for Jesus. He has been the Lord in our lives. Hallelujah. He is worthy of our praise today.
for sustaining us at all times. Father, we worship your holy name and give you praise for your goodness. We thank you for your presence in this place today. I thank you for the hearts that you reach this day, oh God. Those hearts that have given themselves to you, King of glory, may you end and do and rest things in their lives, oh God. Go ahead and worship the Lord. The Bible says he stands at the door and knocks at our heart. And whoever opens their heart to him, he enters and dines with them. Open your heart to the Lord and worship him this day. He desires to dine with you. He desires to speak with you. He desires to do things in your life. Father, we bless you this day and give you the praise because you're worthy.
Dethrone every little king. Dethrone every idol. Because many times we erect idols before us. And sometimes our problems become our focus or our center of worship. Anything that is exalted, exalted, exalted above God. That is an idol. God was very clear with the children of Israel. In the first commandment he told them. Thou shalt have no other God. Thou shalt worship no other God. Thou shalt bow to no other God. Nor shalt thou make any graven image that looks like me. So many times we exalt our problems. We exalt our challenge. We exalt our pain. 
above God. But I beseech you and I pray and I plead with you if God is going to be God in your life if God is going to reign in your life if God is going to be that lion of the tribe of Judah you have to make room and you have to allow him to be God. You have to allow him to be exalted above everything else. That all you see is God. That all you're thinking about is God. All you are planning to do things with is God. When God is exalted, everything else will bow. Demons will bow. People will bow. Sickness will bow. And what does it And God will be glorified. Make room. Take away Make room. Take away chifo. Make room. Take away chifo. Make room in your heart. Take away chifo. Make room in your mind. Take away chifo. Make room in your mouth. Take away chifo. Make room in your mouth. Take away chifo. I said, make room in your mouth. And this is what I mean. Let your mouth speak hope and faith and life. Stop talking death and defeat. The Bible says you are snared by the words of your mouth for life and death is in the mouth or in the tongue Fuga Yesu Fuga Oli Kabaka Wasayuni Oli Polokoma Polokoma Yayuta Fuga Holy Kavaka, 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 Kavaka. Era Holy Polokoma, Holy Polokoma. Hey, hey, Yuda, Fuga. Holy, Holy Kavaka, Kavaka. Polokoma, Yuda. Father, reign in our lives now. In your grace and in your glory and in your power. Reign in our hearts. In your glory. In your beauty. And in your power. Reign in this nation. In your glory. And in your power. Be exalted. Above everything else. In the name of Jesus. We give you praise. And we give you glory. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Somebody give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 You have your Bible with you. Please go to the book of Matthew. Chapter 12. The gospel according to St. Matthew. Chapter 12. For the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at the life and the ministry of Jesus. From this great gospel of Matthew. We began from chapter 8. And then we went to chapter 9. And then we went to chapter 10. Jesus commissioning his disciples. And then we come to chapter 11. Where Jesus proved to John. That is the answer. And then from there we saw Jesus. As our rest. Hallelujah. But let's continue to follow. 
the ministry of our Lord and Jesus. Because Jesus told us when he was talking to his disciples like you and me that follow me come ye after me and then I will make you I will make you to become fishers follow me. And the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 that, that we should follow his footsteps. And as we follow his footsteps he makes us Atufula. he molds us Atufum. he heals us Atuonya. he blesses us he lifts us up Atuimusha. in the mighty name of Jesus and Christo. so from chapter 11 now Kuminemu, Jesus moves on Yesu ye yo. verses 1 he goes to the garden and then he begins to pluck to pluck wheat with his disciples oku, oku, oku and the Pharisees are the problem. Because it was a Sabbath day. And then he told them, I am the Sabbath. Continuing with this subject from chapter 11. Where he says, Come unto me, all ye labor and ever laden, and I will give you rest. That day God was talking about was me. That day when God says, On the Sabbath you shall not do work but rest, it was me. And then after that, we we'll pick up now his ministry from verses 9. Matthew chapter 12 from verses 9 sharing for a few minutes your obedience will bring desired results. Your obedience will bring a desired result. Whatever you desire has been granted by God. But what manifests your desire to you is your obedience. Can you say that with me? My obedience to his word. My obedience to his commands. Will bring my desired results. And so verse 9. The Bible tells us that when he was departed hence. He went into the synagogue and behold there was a man which had a withered hand and they asked him saying is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him they have already said nothing should be done on the Sabbath they have said nothing should be carried out on the Sabbath and so here is our Lord he has come and he saw a man in the synagogue who had with their heart. And then the Pharisees provoked Jesus. Because they knew that he would heal. So they asked him a question. Think about it. It was not Jesus who asked this thing. He's in the church. And the people are in the church. And in the church, there was a man with a withered hand. Simulema, but withered. Withered. So everything was dry. You could see literally the skin dry. 
the muscles dry and no life what caused it to dry the Bible does not say maybe modern science will tell us it was a stroke or oh, maybe arthritis or they will come up with a name and so they looked at the man and they looked at Jesus. Say Jesus now. Look at that man. And remember it is the Sabbath. And the Bible tells us the reason why they ask him is because they want to accuse him that he heals on the Sabbath. But in the previous verses he had told them that he is Lord over the Sabbath. And that is verses 8. For the Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath. So the day that the Lord talked about he was talking about me. You didn't have the understanding. And so here is the Son of Man who is the Lord over the Sabbath. And here are the Pharisees. And they are looking at him. And they are, are setting him up to heal this man on the Sabbath day so they can accuse him for violating the Sabbath. They are not concerned about the life of this man. All they are concerned about is to accuse Christ. Think about that. And then Jesus answers them. Verse 11. And he says unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep and if it fall into the pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it up? How much more then is a man better than a sheep? Then he asks them a question. Wherefore, is it lawful to do well on the Sabbath day? And then the Bible says, verse 13. Then saith he to the man, stretch forth your hand. And he stretched it forth. And it was restored. Or like the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held counsel against him how they might destroy him. Wow. Think about that. Jesus in their midst. And their problem is simply this. They don't recognize him. They simply want to keep their position. They simply want to keep their status. They simply want to please themselves. But the healer is in the crowd. The miracle worker is in the crowd. And I believe with all my heart most of the people that were in the synagogue they had all kinds of afflictions. They were sick. But none of them none of them received a miracle from Christ. None of them could reach out and say Jesus help us. None of them could reach out and honor this Christ in their midst. All they are looking for is to accuse Christ. Is to distance themselves from the Christ. And yet this Jesus, he is their rest. He is their Sabbath. And since he has come, everyone that was troubled, everyone that had no rest, everyone that had no where to go? Jesus was in their midst. And in that same way, I want you to know, and I want the world to know, Jesus has not left us. He's still in our midst. Before he died. He told his disciple in the book of John that I will be going for a while. But then after that I'll come back. And if you love me and keep my commandments. In the book of 
John chapter 16 and John, John chapter 14 he says, and 15 he says I and my father will come and we will abide with you forever listen to me child of God listen to me woman of God listen to me the world Jesus is still here he hasn't left he is here by his spirit above all he gave us a name and when we call upon his name we are calling upon him and heaven is not far from where you are even if he's not here to get to you it will take a split second as a speed of light or more than a speed of light and so Jesus is here in the same way he was but how willing are you to honor him how willing are you to recognize him how willing are you to obey him? How willing are you? How willing are you? And the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 that if you are willing and obedient you shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient you shall eat the good of the land. And so there is a man here and I believe there are men that were sick. And Jesus finally looked at the man. And says, man, stretch out your hand. And the Bible says, and the Bible says, verse 13, and he stretched it and it was restored whole life. Can you imagine such a manifestation of a miracle in a broad day light. And in those days they didn't have chairs. They sit down. And so, so here is the man standing in their midst. And everyone right from the back would notice him. And I want you to see the hand with us in your mind. And then Jesus said, stretch. Can you imagine? Stretch. Stretch. He didn't help him to stretch. So I want you to imagine here is the man with that, with that hand. And uh, Jesus saying stretch it. And I understand that probably for years the man could not stretch. For all years reason. The muscles were withered. The skills withered. No blood that is flowing. So I understand. And maybe from time to time he tried to wither. To, 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 to stretch. Until he gave up. But he's Obedience to Christ's command brought his desired result. And so two miracles happened. Number one, the hand stretched. That was number one miracle. Miracle number two, the hand began to become alive. And the Bible says it was restored as the other one. And probably before it stretched it was small as my microphone. But I want you to see a miracle. And he stretched. The first miracle. The second miracle. They could see the flesh coming alive. And the hand increasing in size. Wow. What a miracle. What a miracle. What a miracle. But when we look at the miracle, it came out of great opposition. Number two, it came out of a great, great 
great, great obedience. Because I can go into the footsteps of the man and in his mind. And I can see the man saying to himself, What if a miracle does not happen? What if? And many of us fail to receive from God. Because we are not obedient to his instruction. When's the last time you read your Bible? And the Bible tells you to do something or to believe something or to say something. And you acted on it. How many times have you attended church? And you have attended places of worship and you have listened to messages and you have left messages from where you are to people that obey and act on the word of God great miracles will happen to them and it does not matter whether your condition is like this man or whether your condition is worse than the emperor man or is not to that extreme but whatever the condition is God is well able to bring a desired result to you let it be financial let it be mental let it be healing let it be deliverance let it be this or that sometimes prayer cannot do it for you sometimes attending church will not do for you it will require obedience obedience, obedience, obedience. There's a man in the scriptures and most of us probably have heard about him. His name is Nayaman. He is a leper. And he came to the man of God, Elisha. And Elisha did not even get out of the house. He simply sent a message to him and says, I want you to go to this river and I want you to dip yourself seven times and you'll be made whole. And the man said to himself, I am a general in my land. And where I come from, there are many, many places where I can go. There is the river this and there is the river that. And if I go to that river, and by the way, those waters are more clean. And he got on his chariot to go in great, great wrath. And the Bible tells us, his servant says, sir, what if the prophet asks you to do something more difficult than that? Will you do it? And then I can see him says, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. And then he went and dipped himself the first time, the second time, the third time, the seventh time. And when he got out on the seventh time, Behold a miracle. He was cleansed. But every part of his life that had been affected by leprosy was restored. What is it that you need from God? What is it that I need from God? What is it that we need from God? Is it a blessing? Is it healing? Is it deliverance? It will take obedience from you. And God will always test us at the levels of our obedience. Hear me and hear me good. Look at Abraham. Look at Moses. Look at all these wonderful men of God. All of them. God tested them at obedience. Are you willing to obey? Because if you don't, great miracles will pass you by. And in closing, the Bible says, verses 14. Then the Pharisees went out and held a cancer against him. How they might destroy him. When Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from ants. And a great multitude followed him. And he healed them all. They left 
the church and other people join them and I can hear them saying Jesus for us we acknowledge you whatever you tell us we are willing to obey he healed a man who obeyed his command and probably some people were saying that is luck that is luck. No. When the rest came, they received the same results. Your healing. Your healing. Your healing. Your healing. Your healing. Your deliverance. Your breakthrough. Will come at the point when you choose to obey God's word. I pray that God will help you to find comfort in obedience. I pray that God will help you to find a blessing in obedience. King Saul lost his kingship because of disobedience. Father, I pray that you help my sisters and my brothers always to find peace. Always to find hope. Always to find comfort at a place of great obedience. Because sometimes you require us to leave our comfort zone. Sometimes you will require us to give our last to give the only thing we have. Sometimes you require us to deny our flesh, to deny our hearts what we so much desire. But we know there's nothing that you ask for from us that will live our lives. Because everything you take from us, you push it into our future where it multiplies. And I thank you because great miracles are coming when your people learn to obey. Some of them are simply at the point of a breakthrough right now. And once they obey you, you will do mighty things. Now some of you have simply obeyed and I believe God is going to bless you. And some of you have been reluctant. Yes, you are willing. But you are saying, I'm going to take time. No. When God tells you something, do it right away. That is obedience. And God is going to bless you. In the name of Jesus. Father, I bless your people. I pray for grace. I pray for the anointing. I pray for breakthrough. I pray for a great move of the Holy Ghost in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let every power of darkness, let every work of the enemy be broken of their lives. Be destroyed of their lives. And let your healing grace, let your mercies, let your love begin to flow to them. Now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Now I'm going to ask you to give by faith. Out of obedience. I know most of us are saying these are hard times. And so we are going to save and save and save. How much can you save? And how much money do you need to keep you alive to the day of your death? Hear me and hear me good. 
You don't need money to be alive. You need God. And when you have God, He will open the windows of heaven. And when you have God, He will connect you to your breakthrough. He will connect you to your blessing. That's all you need. And when you look through scripture, great miracles, great supplies, great breakthrough, came to people who had no respect for money who had no respect for things because of the cause of the gospel. May God bless you as you give. May God multiply what you have given. May the goodness of God begin to flow to you for the rest of your life. And I bless you, my friend. I bless you, child of God. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would like to hear from you. Please. But communicate to us. Write to us. To us. Connect with us. Send your prayer requests. And we believe God will bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. We love you. Until we meet again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen.